hi guys welcome back to my channel i am jules if you are new here and this is my dog willow my puppy she's five months old and she uh wants to join the video today i guess i really just couldn't get her out of the room so she's here to stay uh until she leaves which um but the purpose of this video is to show you guys how i edit my instagram pictures Um, so a lot of you guys ask me how I edit my Instagram photos and for the longest time I was like I don't really know how to explain this because um, in the beginning when I first started I used to edit a ton and then when I ended um, or like the last few months it's the editing process has really been very minimal um, there's a few things that I do to each photo and every photo is different so I figured I would just kind of go through a photo with you guys a few photos and show you exactly how I edit um, and how I upload and the process that I like the apps that I use um, to kind of curate my feed and everything because I know that's a big thing um, that's either a lot of people either over edit um, or don't do anything to their photos and I'm a little bit on the not editing side but a little bit in between so i don't know if this is really talked about that much but i just wanted to share with you guys my personal way to edit because i do get questions about this and i just want to share that with you guys so you can start if you like how my photos are and you want to use some of the trips and ticks that up trips and trick wait <laughs> tips and tricks that's it okay trips and ticks trip tricks and tips to um use on your photos then this will be a really great video for you so the first thing i do is i'm going to share with you guys how i take my photos so what i do is i use my iphone just pretty basic pretty simple and i use my iphone for every single picture that i take most of the time pat is taking my photos when i was in new york city i would have friends taking them um i think if you're a beginning what's if you're in the beginning stages what's really important is to just reach out to people um every person that was taking my photos i was also taking theirs so i would reach out to people in the city other girls doing the same thing that i was doing and i'd be like hey um you know i'm in the city and i see that you shoot photos a lot would love to get together and shoot each other's photos if you're interested sometimes people wouldn't answer and the ones that answered are still my friends today so we shot photos together and you're able to work with that person and be like this is exactly what i want and what i need and they're going to do the same so you guys are on the same page um and i think it's harder to just ask one of your friends who like doesn't do what you're doing and you know they're going to get frustrated and that's just like no fun to work with so reaching out to people if in the area um pat usually takes my photos now and then if he's not around i have like i said my tripod and my bluetooth remote and i set my tripod up put my which comes with this thing and this is like one of those things that just you can open it put your phone in it and it sticks to the tripod i have a bluetooth remote and i set that up and i'll just take my own photos so the first thing i'm going to show you guys on my phone just what i do to my pictures i'm going to go through um the process of how i edit so there's a few apps that i use okay so the first thing i do with this photo is i'm going to go ahead and pick out i usually when i take a bunch of photos it takes me like a thousand sometimes more sometimes less to get the perfect photo i always go through the photos favorite my, the ones that i really like and then delete the rest just so i can save room on my phone so right now i'm just going to go through and pick out the photo that i want and open lightroom so lightroom is probably the first app that i open um, as you can see i have a lot of photos because i use lightroom for basically everything unless the lighting is like absolutely perfect so for this one what i want to do is take out a little bit of the blue and you can see the before and after here so before i'm going to go ahead and just edit it okay so you can see that it has a lot of blue tones it's still really good lighting but i wanted to um get a little bit of the blue out so i'm going to go to the colors and i take the temperature of the first one and move it up a little bit so it's a little more yellow and you can see back and forth here how like the blue is a lot just i don't like the blue tone so i move it up to get yellow and here's the before and after so the before is blue and the after is very yellowy but not too much i only do it a tiny bit then i'm going to go ahead and go into the exposure and contrast sometimes i play with the exposure um a lot of times i take the light down a little bit and then i always add green so this is before 
and that's after. So then I'll get out of Lightroom and you can see the photo here at the bottom of my uh, camera roll. And then what I would do is take it into Visco. This depends on the photo. So really I'm taking it into Visco if I wanna add grain and I didn't do that in Lightroom or a lot of times there's a trick to make you look a little bit longer and just kind of um, skew the angles a little bit more. So I'm gonna show you what I do here. So I'm just uploading the photo that I just took just edited from Lightroom. Okay, so what I do here is click on the adjust and I'll just go to the right, which has the skew and you can see at the bottom, if you move it back and forth, if you take the Y part of it, not the X, the Y, and if you just move it slightly back and forth, you can see how I'm kind of pulling my legs more towards me and it kind of gives you the longer look feel, which I just like in general. I mean, I think that I already have pretty long legs, but sometimes this effect just makes a little bit, makes for a little bit um, more dramatic, and sometimes I like that. So after that, I will probably just take the crop and straighten, and I'll go ahead and just make it so it's a little bit closer, make it so that I'm more centered. Um, really, this doesn't really have a huge effect, but I like to just pull it in a little bit as you can see, I'm playing with this skew here. If you use the X, it really brings like your head forward, which I don't know why you would want that. You probably wouldn't. And that's it. So I save it to the camera roll. And here's the before and after. So the before is just longer and the after I pull it forward a little bit. This whole thing is so minimal. There's really like not a huge difference, but if you're looking to just tone your photos a little bit or give those little differences, I never over edit so that my photos are um, <clears throat> totally different color, totally different background. And I think some people that do that, it's really cool and it's almost like an art and a way of editing your photos. Um, I just personally like when my feed looks a little bit more natural and I like to shoot around the best lighting times so that I don't have to get, so that I don't have to edit a crazy amount. Um, when shooting the best light, I would say sunset is my always my go-to. You can do sunrise as well, but I'm not getting up at six o'clock or even earlier just to get ready to take photos so I mean it would be nice to start my day and I actually did that when we were in Jackson Hole um, but that's because we were like on vacation basically so I got up at sunrise with Pat and we did take photos right before sunset you're gonna get the really good golden hour and right after sunset you're gonna get the best sunset hues which is just gonna be great lighting and you probably have like 10 to 20 minutes until it's just dark and you aren't gonna get the shot anymore that is if you're looking for like the best lighting. There are times, um, depending on if you're in a city or just where you are, where you can get like a good golden direct sunlight um, without it looking too orange. I, I find that if it's way before sunset, then it's gonna be way too bright, too many orange and just like bright hues on your face. But there is a way to kind of tone that down and edit that a little bit as well. So before we move on to how I kind of curate my feed, I wanna show you guys, I think I got a lot of questions on how I edited my New Year's Eve photo, which I'll put right here to show you. So this is the photo that I posted on New Year's Eve and me and Pat had taken this with a tripod. So I will link my tripod and the Bluetooth remote down at the bottom. The only thing about this photo with the Bluetooth remote was that I couldn't get it to work because I needed flash for this photo. So what I had to do was I had my, oh, that's cool though. I had my tripod set up here. Um, we had a whole dinner set up. I basically set the table earlier that day so that I wouldn't have to do it then. Um, got this really cute outfit for uh, New Year's Eve even though we weren't going anywhere. Um, and we actually took this a few days prior so that I just had time to plan it out. Put it with my feed and edit it. Usually I'm taking photos a few days in advance. It's rare that I post in real time but that's just because it's hectic. So I put the tripod up and I would have to go put the flash on and do it set self timer for 10 seconds. So I took about, since that takes a long time to like sit, sit down, take a photo, go back, set the timer, sit down, do it all. So I think we probably did 20 of them. Um, Pat was not very happy by the end, but we ended up getting a few really cute shots. So that is with flash. If you're not using flash, the Bluetooth remote would have been perfect. You could have just kept snapping the photos. So I'll link both of those at the bottom. So now going into edit this photo. So here is the before photos. As you can see, my nipple is out. So I definitely edited that one, which to me, it doesn't matter that much. You know, we'll move on from that. So these are before. So I go into Lightroom, like I said before. 
from camera roll <clears throat> had to scroll back to find these photos and picked a few that were not edited so i could show you guys the process so i went with this one um this was the one that i edited that i had put up and this is before which i still like the before but i decided to take the blue hues out and make it a little more yellow as you can see you can go really up and really down um, I just go up a little bit and then I always check to see before and after and how I like it. I like to add yellow because I think it just warms up the photo, it brings in a little bit more warmth. And then I went to the exposure and I think I brought that down a little bit. Then I went to grain and added some grain and in this photo it's hard to tell um, but I usually add grain in every single photo of mine. Cropped it a little bit because I didn't like how that um, candle was lit and the focus of the light was really on there and I just thought that it kind of ruined the photo. So I cropped that out a little bit. And guys, that is really it for editing that photo. So if you want to kind of, um, if you want to keep going with this photo, I took it into Facetune. And what I did is go down to um, cool down and kind of brought the photo down a little bit so it wouldn't be so, so it wouldn't be so um, dark. And then I went to details and you can see how my um, outfit already has these little sparkles. I kind of just went over them so that they would shine a little bit more since it was a New Year's Eve photo and I was like, you know, sparkly and feeling all of that. So I went in um, with the detail tool and just went over each one a little bit. It's honestly such the slightest difference, um, but I think personally it makes a difference in your photos if you really take the time. You can see before and after. And as I went in with some of my jewelry, with the detail tool, I really just made the jewelry pop. It's very shiny as it is, so I wanted it to kind of be a little bit more. These are just super, super specific details that I think, you know, take a lot of time and I'm definitely not doing this with every photo. I'm definitely only doing it with the ones that I think could use it. I actually ended up putting it into a Polaroid as well. Um, and that kind of just had a different vibe. Um, all of these photos that are taken in my apartment at night are taken with flash. Um, and you kind of have to play around with the lighting. I had a lot of candles lit because that's just like the vibe that I wanted to go for. Um, but I had to like go back and keep turning the hallway light on and off and asking Pat to like change different lights within our kitchen and living room since they're connected. Um, just so I would get the best photo. And flash on the iPhone is actually pretty good, but you do, I think, have to edit it to kind of make the light look better. Okay, now I'm going to share with you guys how I curate my feed. Um, one thing I want to point out is that I do not spend a ton of time doing this. There was a point um, before of how I would really take time and just plan out my feed. And after a while, it just got to the point where it was too much and I was spending way too much time on it and I didn't know if it really mattered. Um, and then I was having a hard time figuring out like how to keep the feed looking the same all the time. Um, so I scratched that and then when I started traveling more a few years ago, I just was like, I'm gonna have, like I went to Miami and I was like, I hate green in my photos, now I love it. But I was like, I'm just gonna kind of put stuff together since we're at the beach and it's all gonna look very beachy. And then when I go back to the city, it'll all look very city. Um, your feed is always changing because you're always taking new photos. So I think you just have to work with what you have. Um, so I'll go into the first feed. This was my feed at about February of 2020, so right before quarantine. Um, I had taken a few photos with Viv actually in Montclair and they were all, the first were very purpley and white. So I kind of just decided to stick with that. And then I moved on to a lot of denim and blues. So I kind of was like, okay, the focus for the next few days or weeks is gonna be blue, but with a very calm background. Um, so this video, I'm gonna show you, this is basically what my feed looks like now. Um, it's always changing. If you go way back down to the summer, this is my road trip feed, which is still today one of my favorite feeds. It probably is my favorite. Um, it's just so different. It's very like green. I screenshot it so I could show you guys, but it's very green and earthy. And then I went up and I was at the beach and then it was fall. So this is just like scrolling through the feed from the app preview, I forgot to mention that. This is the app preview um, and it is free, at least for your first account. I think you can have one for free and you just can move photos around like this, exactly how you want them. 
Um, I can plan and schedule, but I don't do that. So that's what the app allows you to do. But when I take photos, sometimes I like, okay, am I gonna post two of the same outfit? And I'll play around and see how it looks together or maybe it needs to be spread out a little more. So here's a picture of three different feeds that I have. This was the road trip one, absolute favorite. Um, since I was traveling on the road, everything was naturally going to be very like earthy green and like that's just the kind of backgrounds that I was going to be having. So I planned around neutral earth tones for my outfits for that whole trip. Um, and honestly, it just kind of works like that based on planning. I'm a very big planner. So I would say if you plan out your outfits and based on where you're going, that's just really helpful. The next one is my more current feed. Um, a lot harder to curate. I have had trouble in Philly trying to figure out where to shoot photos and all that. I think I've done a good job of finding places, but I'm also just like very picky with it. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out. So the photo here with the earring, that was a sponsor post. And at first I was like, I don't necessarily want to post this at this time. Um, and ended up turning out that I had to. So I did, I think I fit it in pretty well here. Um, so I just, very yellowy earthy still but with a little bit of like a sparkle i would say all right i'm gonna go in and show you one more photo that i edited recently um sometimes i do this to photos this specific photo i wanted it i'm just gonna grab the photo here and what i do is go to retouch and i will click on smooth and basically smooth out my face because for some reason the photo turned out a bit blurry um, so I'm smoothing it, but I like to pull it down to, that's 100, that's zero. So you can see the difference. I don't want it to be too noticeable, so I do it around 20. And I do it to any of these, basically any of my skin that is showing. I think this smoothing tool just really gives you like a more defined look. Um, I would say that you don't need it in every photo, but there's some that just, you know, no one needs to see my lines from everything. You know happy to talk about it but okay so then next i went to <clears throat> matte and i'm gonna take a little bit of the shiny parts of my face like here on my uh, left eye and map them out <clears throat> so that it's not as shiny and this is obviously guys being very picky i don't think this is super necessary all the time um this is just what i do i'm like looking at it now like we can't even tell the difference but when i'm doing it i can Okay, and last thing I like to do, which I don't think this photo needed, but I just showed you with this one, is the Vibrance or Glow. I used Glow here, but usually I would use a Vibrance and you just put the whole glow over your face or whatever, and then this is the before and after, and I just bring it down a ton because I think that with the glow being there full 100%, it's just way too much and it's way too like fake, and I don't wanna see that. No one wants to see that. So that is the before and after. So as you can see, I do edit. I don't edit a ton. Um, I think the biggest thing that I do is go to Lightroom and kind of change the colors. I think that is something that a lot of you are wondering how I do that because um, I always try and take it with the best light, but sometimes I want to take the exposure down um, so it's not super bright or sometimes I just want to change it so that the blue hues are a lot less. I think the blue hues are what gets people in their photos really unhappy because blue doesn't always look good in photos. Um, but neither does like super white. So I think if you bring it to yellow a little bit, which is just warmer, it just warms up the photo and makes it a little bit brighter. Not too much, otherwise you have a yellow feed and I wouldn't necessarily enjoy that. Um, with the app preview, I use that every single day and I'm always mixing around my photos and seeing what looks good. Um, and if you're only posting in real time, um, I think you can still do that. You just kind of have to take your photo, put it into your feed and see how it's going to look. And I think the other tip I would say is planning out your outfits. Um, I like to plan my outfits. I don't necessarily plan them around colors, um, but I do plan them out so that I know, okay, I just shot in um, a rooftop and a rooftop garage, which is very open and basic. So I'm going to do that again for my next photo or something similar. When I was on my road trip, it was really easy. Like when you're on vacations, I think it's a lot easier, but when you're kind of stop taking the same photos in the same area is a little bit more tricky but still doable so what i would say ending this video what can i say to you guys um just practice it is not easy um people will look at you on the streets people will do whatever they want to do but at the end of the day if this is something that you love just go for it and do it in practice and don't expect a huge don't expect something so big at first. Um, when I started, it was almost four years ago now, and 
at, at the beginning my mom and my little brother were taking my photos and for me to talk to them it was like all right we're gonna go do this come help me whatever it's not always like that and i think as you take photos and get better it just you improve a lot like any business and anything you're doing if you practice you'll get better at it the beginning of my feed when i first started when i look back now is horrendous and even when i look back like a few months now i'm like oh my god like what was i thinking so you're always changing you're always having new ideas so i would just say practice and you guys will get it anyway that is it please subscribe to my channel hit the notification bell if you guys want to be updated when my videos come out um, my goal of 2021 is to do a ton more youtube videos so subscribe and that will be the new goal and hopefully i'll get that goal of just putting out a bunch of videos. All right, see you guys in the next video, bye.